what's going on everybody welcome back to football therapy with me i host yan i hope you are all doing well and keeping safe and clean in these troubling testing and rather peculiar times welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video which is a chelsea news video talking about two topics today one being luka jovic the striker that i've spoken about before apparently will be offered to chelsea football club or Tottenham Hotspur from Real Madrid. It's no real surprise after his time there recently, but I want to talk about his numbers this season, last season, and what I'd think generally about this signing. Also, I want to talk to you guys about the Premier League's ambition to restart the campaign behind closed doors so that next campaign can indeed start in August and kind of speculate on how I feel it would go if this could happen and how Chelsea would do for the rest of the season. It already feels so far away football, doesn't it? Man, it's just so weird. So I have some interesting stuff to unpack, but it's time for a message from my sponsor. You may know by now I've teamed up with OneFootball, the one-stop application, platform, website, app, everything, to go and get your football hit, whether that be news on what's going on with the Premier League, transfer news, links, contract situations, and of course when football does eventually start up again, fixtures, statistics, score lines, and all basically updated. It will keep you plugged into the matrix of football. I use it. The link is in the top of the description for one football. Be sure to go check that out. Uh, all right, let's get on with it. All right, Luka Jovic, man. Okay, so I've spoken about him before. I really like this player. I watched him play against us in, at Stamford Bridge last season. He looks like an elite footballer. Obviously, at that campaign, he was posting some incredible numbers. More on that in a moment. But as we know, Chelsea are very interested in bringing in another centre forward to help out Chelsea's current top goal scorer, Tammy Abraham, in getting the goals for the Blues. Chelsea have been linked to a whole host of strikers since the beginning of the January transfer window. High profile ones, not so high profile ones, players that look like they'll cost loads and loads of money, perhaps players that don't look like they'll cost so much. Chelsea obviously put a bid in for Moussa Dembele for about 36 or 34 million pounds, and a number has since come out that Leon went closer to 80 million, which is a lot. But Luka Jovic could be offered to Chelsea or Tottenham. But let's talk about Chelsea for the moment. Plus also, you'd fancy Jovic maybe preferring coming to Chelsea for a few reasons. Perhaps Champions League football, perhaps not having to compete with Harry Kane, perhaps maybe getting paid more money, loads of factors. Now, if you don't know, Jovic hasn't really had the best time at Real Madrid. Obviously, he got the dream transfer after a great campaign at Frankfurt but has not since been able to compete with Karim Benzema with Zinedine Zidane back in the hot seat over in the Bernabeu. And really, he's not really played much. And when he has, his confidence looks low. He's not really doing the business. And yeah. So on the screen now, I'm going to put the transfer marked player profile sort of information on the screen. As you can see there, he's played quite a lot this season. Not really done much. But interestingly, one thing that has happened is his player market value has dropped significantly. This is only natural when you're not playing the game. He was an up and coming superstar striker in Europe. Now he's a bench warmer with low confidence. As you can see on the graph screen now, ever since he joined Real Madrid, transfer marked puts his value on a <laughs> significant decline. So sure, this season he's been disappointing and posted low numbers. Granted, he hasn't been given much of a chance as well, but how did Luka Jovic do last season? Like I said, he definitely passed the eye test last season, but across the Bundesliga league campaign and indeed Europe, Luka Jovic scored 27 goals. This was for Frankfurt as well, remember? This is not like Bayern Munich. 27 goals across Europe and the league, and six assists as well, playing for Frankfurt. This works out to 33 goal involvements in just 33 starts. Yep, 33 involvements in 36 starts. An absolutely elite centre forward return. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes indeed, this works out to a goal contribution every 88 minutes across the Bundesliga and in Europe. 
Again, I don't need to tell you that's a very, very handsome return indeed. So, it could be a superb opportunity for Chelsea to get a striker they were kind of linked with before he we went to Real Madrid. I remember talking to loads of Germans inside Stamford Bridge asking could Luka Jovic be coming to Chelsea because it was actually in the news story, like in the news at the time, there was a few headlines, Jovic to Chelsea, could this be the audition game, which if it was, he absolutely got the part. And all the German fans I spoke to were like, no, he's going to Real Madrid. And this is before, like, it was a dead cert. Like, they knew. The fans knew. Do you know what I mean? They were like, he's going to Real Madrid, mate. So, fair enough. And off he went. And the thing is, this could be an opportunity. Chelsea won a centre forward. He's a very talented centre forward. But it's a risk because, say, it's going to cost £50 million. It will be a lot for a player that's not scoring at the moment. When you buy a player that's not a starting hot shot centre forward at the time, you can often end up with an Alvaro Morata situation. You feel me? So, it's a risk. Something I've talked about in Football Therapy before is I would be interested in seeing if Chelsea could loan Luka Jovic for a year with maybe an option to buy, something like that. Because if he's not going to be playing for Real Madrid, he might as well be playing for us. Chelsea have got a relationship with Real Madrid. Maybe they should exercise that. We've recently loaned a player and bought him in Mateo Kovacic. Who knows? Maybe Chelsea could do the same thing with Luka Jovic. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Anyway, moving on. The Premier League have been meeting and talking about what's going on in world football obviously, certainly in European football, about restarting the league and tying up so many loose ends. We all know the financial ramifications of the league not being finished, for the league going into the next season, if the league becoming void or just predicting the end results. There's just, it's just way too messy to try and work out and keep everyone happy. So ideally they want to conclude the season and they want to do it behind closed doors, which obviously makes the most sense. Sure, it's boring as a spectacle to watch, even on TV, but in such troubling times, you have to take all precautions and absolutely this would be a necessary one. So they want to restart the season in June. Now, firstly, I want to caveat this part of the video with, I don't trust anything as of yet because this health situation is going to get way worse before it gets better. But if their ambitions are realistic ones and just say it does, then th the next campaign, the 2021 campaign, can still start in August moving forwards. Whether that will start behind closed doors, I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll be quite a while before the stadium is starting to fill again that's up to the government etc but it would be good to tie up this season it's the right thing to do people can say oh you know it would be funny for Liverpool not to win the title and Leeds not to get promoted but you know it needs to be finished and Chelsea are in a strong position remember Chelsea are in fourth and they were in good form which is kind of concerning for both the likes of say Chelsea Football Club and Manchester United because both teams are in good form before football was halted so in terms of how they're going to play when football starts up again, that's a concern for both clubs who are both going for the Champions League spots. The good news for Chelsea, perhaps over Manchester United, they'll have players returning from injury, the likes of Tammy Abraham, uh, Christian Pulisic, Callum Hudson-Odoi, N'Golo Kante, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. These names are rolling off the tongue here in terms of first-teamers, and that's hugely important for Chelsea. And if they do get an opportunity to train together, gain some chemistry, reignite the ideas of Frank Lampard, then Chelsea could come out of this sort of situation in a little bit more of a positive life. Life? Light? than Manchester United. But then again, you look at the likes of United and think about Paul Pogba returning and playing with Bruno Fernandes. Like, Fred's been good as well. Maybe a midfield three of Fred, Pogba and Fernandes. Suddenly, Manchester United's midfield looked like they could seal that top four spot, you know? So like I said, at this point, talking about this is me really just speculating because I'm not entirely sure that th this may be way too an ambitious date for the Premier League to restart the season or rather conclude the season behind closed doors. I'm sure all players are itching to sort of get it done. You know, Kepa Reed the Balaga probably wants to see if he can do some good performances with the pressure off without the crowd. Maybe he can solidify a spot and change Frank Lampard's mind for the remainder of the season going into next season and keep his number one spot. You know, maybe Tammy Abraham scores another five goals um, to get or something like that or gets his, maybe, who knows, maybe he can finish the Premier League with 20 Premier League goals playing uh, in his first season for Chelsea in the number nine shirt. Loads of stuff like that. Pulisic might fancy getting a couple more goals. Mason Mount to really make their first campaigns in the Chelsea first team look really, really good. 
Hudson Adoy, he probably fancies another Premier League goal. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff here that would be really important for these young players in terms of finishing the season. And let's not forget, Chelsea is still in the FA Cup. If that is indeed to conclude as well, Frank Lampard, Chelsea, the Blues should still believe they can win the FA Cup. So there's a lot going on here, man. And hopefully behind closed doors in a really safe environment, regulated appropriately, the Premier League, the English football competitions can conclude and we can move on together safely and intelligently. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below, express yourselves on the Premier League situation. What do you think? Do you think realistically it will conclude? Do you think it won't? Let me know about that. What do you think about Luka Jovic? Do you agree with me in thinking perhaps that we should try and wrangle a loan deal, a year loan deal and assess him as a striker at Chelsea and if he you know, comes good like Mateo Kovacic then look to buy. Express yourself in the comments comment sections down below if you've enjoyed the content i've provided you today guys i'd appreciate it if you like the video and why not subscribe to the channel if you're indeed new you're welcome to follow me on the socials at football yannick on both instagram and twitter stay safe enjoy the football that's not happening and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outlined in chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby